Hey guys and welcome to Teal House Farm. Today we are canning our own Rotel dupe product and so come join us along as we get that done. Let me show you everything that we need. First we have one sack of uh, homegrown tomatoes here out of the freezer so before I freeze them I just washed them off real quick with some water so they weren't dirty and then I took out any large cores and then I just put them in a grocery sack and just stuck the whole thing in the freezer. About two hours ago, I took one sack out of the freezer and I've been letting them defrost a little bit. The reason I freeze them is because it makes it really easy to peel the skins off, as you'll see in just a minute. Um, so we're going to need, I have one bag worth, we're hoping for about 10 cups of diced tomatoes. We'll adjust our recipe based on how much we'll actually get. Then we need the peppers. So Rotel usually uses green chilies and I don't grow chilies, so what we're going to do is we're going to dice up some of our homegrown jalapenos and some sweet bell peppers and that should help spread out the spice so it's a little closer to a chili spice. If you want to go grow your own chilies or just buy some chilies from the store, you would need one cup of diced green chilies per about 10 cups of diced tomatoes. For spices, we have some black pepper, some ground coriander, some oregano leaves, and some canning salt. You don't have to have canning salt. Um, you can just use non-iodized salt or sea salt, works fine too. So with any of those three is a good option. This is very simple to make. We are going to can it in half pints. Rotel usually comes in a 10 ounce can, and so a half pint is going to be eight ounces, but I'd rather can it a little bit less than can a pint's worth and then have too much most of the recipes we usually use it for. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I will give canning times for both uh, pints and half pints um, so that you know depending on how you wanna can it. I don't think you can buy a 10 ounce jar. I think you could, you could use the 12 ounce, the tall skinnier ones, but you're still gonna be two ounces off. So that's just kinda of how it is in the US with standard size canning jars. Now, does this need pressure canned or water bath canned? Well, that's a really good question. And so this is not a USDA approved recipe. And if you look online uh, and look at other recipes, you'll see people don't quite agree on the best way to can it. And some people say it's okay to water bath can because it is mostly tomatoes. And they add some um, like lemon juice to it to increase the acidity uh, to make it safe for water bath canning. I'm not comfortable with that. Peppers are a low acid food. They're absolutely not recommended for water bath canning. So we are going to pressure can this according to the time required for peppers. And that's what I feel most comfortable doing. Okay, first step, let's get all the tomatoes out of the bag. And then we're gonna need to peel these. And again, the peels are gonna come right off really easily because these were frozen and then partially defrosted. Now, if you don't wanna use frozen tomatoes, you can use fresh tomatoes. You would need to follow the blanching instructions to get them uh, to be peelable. And uh, I can link that below for you. I just prefer to do it this way. I find it a little bit easier. Using a fresh tomato will give you a little bit of a firmer final product, but I don't think the difference is that huge. We are gonna save the peels to make sauce with later, so they're just going back in this bag and they're gonna go back in the freezer. And when we're all done with tomatoes for the year, the last thing we'll do is make sauce with peels and veggies, and it's really good. It's like a marinara sauce we make, and I can link that recipe below as well. Next step after everything's peeled is we're gonna dice the tomatoes, and I'm using this half gallon jar as my measuring cup here just so I know how many I have. I'm not real good at eyeball guessing, so we're gonna get an exact number. And then once we get a measurement, we go ahead and shake them into this large stainless steel pot. Try not to use an aluminum pan. You don't want a reactive metal, so try to get a stainless steel or enameled pot to do this. Next up, we're gonna dice our peppers real small. So we're gonna do this small bell pepper into tiny little pieces. And then we are gonna go ahead and do a couple jalapenos. Now, I was silly here and thought, I'm not gonna bother go getting gloves. I'm only gonna do two or three peppers, and I definitely should have. About 30 minutes after filming this video, my fingers were on absolute fire. So protect yourself, wear some gloves. We get it all added to a bowl and mixed together, and then we dump our peppers in with our tomatoes. Next thing up, we gotta get our spices. So we have a tablespoon of canning or other non-iodized salt. And then we're going to do about a teaspoon of black pepper. You could also use white pepper. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of oregano leaves. 
and a half of a teaspoon of coriander. We're gonna take our pot now and go put it on the stove and we wanna bring this to a boil. And we're gonna stir occasionally just to make sure nothing burns to the bottom. Do not add any water, just cook it just like that. Let's get our jars ready. We're gonna do half pints today, so we're gonna just wash them in some hot soapy water. And then we're gonna put them on this cookie sheet because it's important they stay warm until we're ready to can. So we need to just stick them somewhere they can stay warm. In this case, I've preheated the oven to 220. We're just gonna slide them in there and keep those jars warm. I also washed the lids we're going to use and I'm just gonna keep them in a bowl of warm water here until I'm ready. Pressure canner up on the stove and we're gonna fill it. We need about three inches of warm water. Don't bring it to a boil yet, just warm water. There it is boiling. Now we're gonna reduce it to a simmer for about five minutes and this will help reduce the liquid that's in here so we get less of a soupy and more of a chunky rotel. And then we're ready to can. We want an inch headspace. And this recipe, I think I made eight half pints is what I ended up with at the end. It doesn't matter what style half pint you use, wide mouth, regular mouth, they're all the same size. We wipe the rims with a clean, damp towel, and then we're gonna add our lids on there that are still warm from being in the warm water. And then rings to fingertip tightness. Careful, those jars are super hot, burned my fingers a bit. And into our canner with the warm water. Once everything's in, we're gonna add our lid. And we're gonna bring it to a boil. And once we have a nice chimney steam, which you can't really see on the video, but it's there, we drop our regulator on. And then we're gonna get up to 11 pounds pressure. So our regulator is doing a nice hula hoop. And then we're gonna can for 35 minutes. And that's for half pints or pints. So both have the same canning time for this product. Once the canner is cooled all the way down and set at zero for five minutes, I go ahead and remove the lid. Always remove away from you so you don't get a steam burn. It's still super hot in there. We're gonna get our jar lifters and we're gonna take these out just one at a time. I always sit them on a towel for about 24 hours. After 24 hours, I remove the rings and then store without a ring. They're looking lovely. And they will be a nice dupe for Rotel, which seems to be getting a little bit more expensive every time I go to the store. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.